Hey everyone, I'm in sign mode today and I've got all kinds of signs that I'm making with my Mod Podge reverse transfer technique. And um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just go through making them today and show you how I do it. So these are all done on scrap pieces of wood that I find. Um, I can pretty much make any sign out of a piece of scrap wood. So I'm always rooting through my parents' wood pile. Um, anybody, if I go to their house and they have a wood pile that they're burning, I always sort through it because I always find the perfect pieces of wood that I want to make signs on. So this is a really easy technique. It's um, Mod Podge reverse transfer technique. And you can use either a um, inkjet printer or a laser jet printer but I find that I have the best results with my laser jet printer. The inkjet printer will work, but it's kind of inconsistent, and when you're rubbing off, a lot of the ink comes off with the inkjet. So, that being said, if you have to use an inkjet, give it a try, it might work for you, but if you have a laser jet, then this should be foolproof for you, and you shouldn't have any problems at all. So, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, um, I have all, all kinds of graphics in my Etsy store, after this airs, I'll put a link down in my description um, and you can go and check it out because you can get all the graphics uh, there. They're already reversed and they're ready to use. When you're doing this technique, you have to make sure that you reverse your text. If you don't, when you put it on your wood, it will be backwards. And I'll show you with this right here. So this is what I've printed out on my laser jet printer. And as you can see, it's backwards. But when you put it on the wood and you flip it over, you can see that it's the right way. You can see through the paper now. And you can read it. So, reverse your text. This is plain, cheap, ordinary computer paper. That's all you need to do this. So, and these are some of the signs that I completed this morning. I'll just show you here. All, and again, all scrap pieces of wood that I've just painted with my, I find this method works the best with um, chalk paint. You can use a laser jet, or a, you can use um, uh, latex paint, but I find that it adheres the best to chalk paint, any color. You wanna keep your color light though, because when you put your graphics on it, the um, letters won't show through as well if it's a darker paint underneath. So I, I have a tendency to always just paint them white and then put my graphics on top of it. So these are just some of them that I made this morning. All scrap pieces of wood. And these are little shelf sitters. So they just sit up like that. They're cute. And I make all these graphics myself. And uh, what I like about this is you don't have to have a Cricut. You don't have to have a stencil and you, the possibilities are endless. You can wake up in the morning and say, oh shoot, I'd like to have a sign with this, with our name and a year on it. You can make it on your computer, print it out and make a sign that day. You don't have to have vinyl, you don't have to have a certain stencil to make them. It's uh, pretty neat. And you can make with them. And these I've all distressed. If you are on my, if you are a YouTube friend, um, I have all kinds of tutorials on all kinds of different painting techniques. Uh, this one I distressed with my sander. I also did a little bit of salt paint on it, um, and I distressed it. And there's just so many different ways that you can do. And I have a whole playlist of all kinds of different painting techniques that you can go and check that out over on my channel. And this one's fun for we're almost to spring we can get out on our porch and start using it okay so these have sat completely dry i usually let them sit overnight or if you put them out in the sun where it's warm they will dry faster but if you've never tried this before and this is your first time let them sit overnight and and dry really really well so you're just going to take a damp rag with some water and just you're going to dampen the paper until you can just start to see the graphics show through 
And as soon as you get to that point, you don't want to add any more water because if you add too much water, you when you start rubbing, you'll lift your graphics right off. So you want to just keep them um, just damp. And when I start to rub off, I always like to start in the middle of the graphic. Don't start at the end because then it has a tendency to start to lift that graphic up um, on the corners. So I always start in the middle and you just use your fingertips and you can feel how hard you need to rub and the paper will start just to rubbing right off. And I got people here from Nova Scotia and Alberta. Oh, I might not, the vol, yeah, I'm not sure about the volume on this. It's, um, hmm, might be just your computer. If anybody that's watching, just let me know where you're from. I'm in Ontario and it is a gorgeous spring day here. We finally have nice weather. All the snow is gone and my tulips are up about that much starting. So anyway, you just want to keep rubbing at it, keep working from the center out. And if it gets a little bit too dry and you're finding that you're not rubbing the paper off as well as you would like it to, I just dampen my fingertips, just dampen them in the water, and then keep rubbing. Wisconsin, never been, but I hear you guys have really good cheese. <laughs> I can't wait for the borders to open back up. My husband and I, every spring, head down south to South Carolina and camp for a month. and. Last spring, we were all packed up and ready to go, and of course, everything happened. So, this is our second spring that we haven't been able to go down to the states and enjoy all your state parks and everything soon. And I'm just going to add a little bit more water again. And you can see, this is it just, just kind of takes practice and patience when you're rubbing these off. It's uh, one of those projects that the first time that you do it, you probably, um, it's probably not going to work for you. It kind of just has one of those things where you have to try a couple times to get the feel for it and know from your fingertips how hard to rub so the paper uh, comes off easily. when you can see me do it in real time too so you know how long it takes to actually rub the paper off and make a sign <clears throat> and once this airs I'll put a link down in the description um, for all the products that I use uh, the Mod Podge um, and a link to my printer that I use too I have a really good HP um, or sorry a brother laser jet printer that has been so reliable for me it's worked really well and I mean I do a lot of, of printing a lot so you can check that out and also you can check out my videos that I have um, on distressing wood I just did a video the other day on how you can distress wood with packing tape and it made a fantastic finish it was so cool and it's so easy if you're working inside your craft room and you don't have access to your garage or it's cold out or a little shed and you don't want to sand in your house obviously um, this packing tape technique to make distressed wood works really well and i've also probably built up calluses on the end of my fingers because i make so many of these signs you might find the first couple signs that you make, your fingers might get a little bit sore just from rubbing off, but you'll get used to it. Yes, if you use too much, it depends. If you're using a laser jet printer, um, it won't run unless you actually physically rub your um, pick the ink off if you're rubbing too hard. If you're using an inkjet printer, uh, and you use too much water, you will definitely rub 
the graphics right off. The inkjet printer um, is a little fussy, so that's something that you'll probably just have to play with. But if you're using a laser jet printer and you're just using damp water and just gently rubbing, you won't have any problem with the ink running. Christina, I find this process works best if you let the paper dry for a long time, overnight usually. You're the first person I found who did this process and I love it, so easy to do. Thanks, Christina. Yeah, it is um, such a cool technique and I just love it. I can make any sign that I want. I can design my own graphics and then do it. And uh, like I said, it does take a little bit of practice, a little bit of a knack, and you can see how long it takes. It's not something that you're going to sit down in one minute, rub the paper off, and it's ready to go because you can see that it's quite a process to rub the paper off but I actually kind of find it relaxing. Has anyone else on here ever tried this technique and, um, and made any signs like this? Let me know. And also let me know where you're watching from. Can you do this on metal and glass? Absolutely. I have done them on... Um, now, the only thing that I like to do is when I'm doing them on metal or glass, I don't like to do it unless I've actually painted the surface with chalk paint. I find that this works the best with chalk paint. Um, I have done it on bare metal and it has worked okay, but you have to be really careful because it does, unless you have like a, a galvanized pail that's really old and it's kind of textured a little bit, then your graphics will stick to it better and it won't rub off that easy. But if you're just using like a brand new metal pail and trying this, it'll be tricky for you. So give it a coat of chalk paint first and then put your graphics on it and you shouldn't have any problems at all. Glass, um, it will not work just on plain glass. You have to have it painted with the, a chalk paint. And I have a couple videos actually on how um, to paint my, my glass jars and my glass bottles and then doing the transfers on them. You can go back and you can have a look at those too. If you paint a glass bottle with chalk paint, let the chalk paint dry really, really well, and then put your do this method on top of your chalk paint, it works perfect. You shouldn't have any problems at all. Jamie, you should be a pro. <laughs> From Michigan, Midland, Michigan. Hey, Jamie. Um, yeah, let me know when you try one of these, Jamie, how, it make, how you make out with them. They're a lot of fun. I'm getting there on this last one. And also, I sell um, all of my signs. My signs are my best sellers. And actually, the, my best sellers are my little shelf sitters. So if you have a little um, store that you make signs for, or you're looking to get into something to make a little bit of extra money, 24-7 um, Etsy, these little shelf sitters do really, really well. And people like to put them in their tiered trays. Um, and they just make nice little gifts to stick in. So they are my best sellers. So if you can kind of master this technique and find little pieces of wood, then uh, they're really good to put in, a, in your shop to sell. Thanks, Jamie, for watching. I see your comments on my other ones, and I really appreciate I appreciate everybody for all the support. I actually started up this channel last summer. Um, just wanting to share my love of making signs and then I took most, I, I did them probably through till about September and then I got really busy with my other job. So I didn't really start up until after Christmas this year of making videos again and um, I kind of almost turned it into my full time job now making these. And I'm having a blast, and I can't believe how supportive all the community is on um, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. It's been fantastic, and I've gone from way back in before Christmas with a thousand followers, and now I'm almost to eight thousand followers. So it's amazing, and I just love sharing all of my sign making and paint techniques. And if there's something that you want to learn how to do and you haven't seen that I've done a video on it, 
Um, and if it's something that I know anything about, obviously, then let me know in the comments or um, here and I will uh, do a video on it. Um, Christine is asking two questions. How well does this work on colored paint? This works fine. It works perfect on colored paint. If it's chalk paint, you have to turn it into chalk paint. Uh, and I actually have a video on that, on how if you go into Home Depot or Lowe's and you can buy the little tester paints, and go and pick out the color that you want. You want a light color, you don't want to use a dark color because it won't show through. Um, but pick out a tester. I think, I, I know here in Canada they're around five dollars I think. And there's a lot of paint in it. And then turn it into chalk paint and that will work perfect for this. You don't always have to use white, you can use any color. And would, would this work if you printed off your graphics in white and applied to a black paint? Saw it. Hmm. I have never seen a printer print off white. So that's something I'm not familiar with. I'm not sure. Um, you, what you could do, if, if you find, let me know if, you have, if you've ever seen a printer that prints off with white ink, because I'm, I'm not sure if I ever have. But what you could do is you could, well, I'm not, I was going to say you could paint, if you did a colored background, you put your graphics on like this with the black, you could take a, um, a paintbrush, a nice paintbrush, thin paintbrush, and you could actually paint the lettering in white after you've done this technique and just kind of follow it like tracing. That might work for you, but I have never seen a printer that prints white. So that's interesting if that is such a thing. But you could definitely, if you wanted to have light, white lettering, you could do this technique with the black and then paint over top of it with a nice paintbrush. Like just get a nice artist, uh, you know, something like, like this that you could uh, just really nicely, that's a bit thick, but just paint in your, um, your letters. It might take you a little bit of time but it would work for sure. Great idea. Let me know if you try it out, how it works for you, Christina. Okay, so one thing that I found that people had a concern with when doing these, and I, um, I'm on a Mod Podge Facebook group, and a lot of the girls when they, and guys, when they try this technique, they say they have like a white haze over their lettering. Um, and what I do, I just dampen my finger if you see a little bit of a white haze and just rub away. Most of the time, it rubs right off and it's gone. As you can see here, there's a little bit of a white haze. Let's see if I can get up a little bit closer. A little bit of a white haze and if you just rub it, most of the time, it'll come right off. If you can't get it off, when you put your sealer on top of it, I use a poly, polycrylic sealer. This is a Verithane. This is actually an outdoor, um, an outdoor water-based polycrylic that I like just because it's the outdoor. So if somebody does buy one of my song signs and it ends up going outside, that um, it's sealed really well. And this stuff works fabulous. So if you have a white, uh, white haze and you put this as your top sealer, I always use a matte finish. You can use a, a, a gloss finish. It usually gets rid of that haze and it's gone and it's sealed really well. So there's our welcome to our porch. So that's that one. And this one, you can see I've got three different colors. I've got the black base and then I painted a yellow and then I painted a little bit of red and then I did the white on top and you get a really neat Kind of really aged look and this was just a brand new piece of pine so that's that one um i use plaster as paris as well i know there's a printer that prints white but it's used mostly for sub um sublimation which is regular printer and special color i hope that makes sense uh, uh, that's interesting i did not know hmm that's interesting i'm gonna have that's where google comes in and works wonderful. We'll find out about that. Okay, so this one is just a welcome sign. Again, just a, an old piece of, or a brand new piece of pine that I found. 
scrap pile. Um, I've dampened it just so you can see the letters start to show through and start to rub away. And I've made a welcome sign into this one. If you're not very um, handy with making graphics and you've headed over to my Etsy store and you can't see something that you like, let me know and I can make something for you, put it in my shop and um, make it up for you. I do lots of custom stuff too. Now this technique also, it's if you have a little bit of texture in your wood, like you haven't sanded it down smooth, when you're rubbing it off, you will find that your graphics might rub off where that wood underneath is kind of rough. I don't mind that sometimes because it kind of makes the sign look more antique and more old looking. If you're new here, let me know where you're watching from. I always find it interesting to see how far my channel is reaching people. <laughs> we don't we don't have to work, worry about sunburns yet. We just got our snow melted, but oh, I'm so ready for the nice weather here. I've actually had people tell me that it is relaxing just watching me make my signs like this, just rubbing off the paper. And I find it relaxing myself. Usually if I'm, because uh, I'm on live here, and I'm doing this. Um, if I'm not, I usually have my music going and playing jazz. I love jazz music. And just rub away. It's very relaxing. Now this is getting kind of dry. I'm just gonna wet my fingertips. And just rub away here. Now I did film this morning an actual YouTube video that I'm going to edit um, on step by step of this process right from beginning to the end um, and I'll probably get it edited and put up tomorrow so if there's anything if you're just joining here and you've missed the um, first little bits tomorrow I will have the video up so you can see from start to finish how I've done this. Uh, Jackie, that's okay. This will go on my channel so you can catch up um, and watch the rest of the live afterwards if you can't stick around. We're getting there. I also really like doing this technique on uh, wooden bowls. I actually have some. I always pick these. I always pick these up at the thrift store and uh, paint them white, and then have a nice little quote in the middle, and do this technique, and then rub them off. And that's another really good seller in my um, Etsy store, and what I sell on twenty four seven. Are these little bowls and you can do so many quotes actually I got a whole bunch I need to make up and um, I'm gonna put nice Mother's Day quotes in them so this technique again you can do in wooden bowls do you use the packing tape technique on the boards you're using um, these ones actually I didn't use the packing tape technique these ones I did uh, the salt technique. So I had, um, I did my base coat in my black chalk paint, and then I had some little containers left of the yellow salt paint and some red salt paint. And I just did a real light coat on the, the boards, and then I did the white over top. And that's how this came out with the uh, yellow and the red with a little bit of there wasn't it wasn't a really thick salt paint mixture it was just light and it just kind of leaves that little flex so that's what I did on these boards um, 
But the packing tape technique is really cool. And I had, I'm not sure if it was one of you gals, sent um, in the messages this morning when I read through on the comments on one of my videos to try, because uh, with the packing, the packing tape works really well, and she said you should try the duct tape. And I thought, well, that would be a really neat thing to try because I bet you that it would make it really chippy. It would really grab a hold of that paint when you're taking it off and leave a real chippy finish. So I'm gonna try that with the duct tape. Duct tape would be a little bit more expensive, so you wouldn't want to use it on everything. But to do a special sign and try that technique, it would be uh, it would be pretty pretty cool. We're almost there. you Jamie yes I knew I read that this morning in my comments and uh, I want to try that because I, I'm pretty sure it would probably work really well and of course this technique can also be used on photos that you've printed out on your um, Oh, okay, what have I got over here? When you do, well, when you type your graphics on the computer, do you have to reverse the letters? Yes, you have to reverse the letters. With this technique, you always have to reverse it. I'll show you here. This is how I print it out. Oh, now see, it's gonna be backwards for you, or it's the right way for you. But yes, you reverse your text. So when you put it on your paper, it's the right way around. Reverse your text and it works the best with a laser jet printer. Can you watch a live at a different time? You bet you can. I'm gonna have this posted when my live is finished. I'll put it on my channel and it'll be under lives and you can see it right from the start to finish. And um, I also, as I was saying before, I just finished filming a video on this exact technique and I went from the start to the finish. So you at your leisure, you can watch that video and see all the steps right from a to Z, or Z, wherever you're from. Okay. I love making these signs and my second favorite thing to make is mason jars and I make piles of mason jars and put nice little quotes on them with this exact technique make sure you use your chalk paint recipe paint them the jars with uh, two or three coats of the chalk paint and then use this technique on top of that and you have to be a little bit more careful with rubbing these graphics off of a glass jar than wood because it does have a little bit more of a tendency to rub off easier on the glass jars. But if you've got a really good coat of your chalk paint on, then you should be golden. It should work fine. Did these signs up this morning and I can't remember what this one even is so when I'm rubbing this one off the next one it's going to be surprised for me for what graphic I have underneath it because I kind of forget okay so we've got this completely rubbed off and it looks great so I think that'll look really nice on uh, front door okay so I'll put that to the side all these have to have a top coat put on them after I've done rubbing all of this paper off. And like I said before, when you're rubbing them off, and if you can't get all of that little bit of that white haze off, when you put your top coat on, um, it will uh, it will cover most of that up itself. And do any of you guys own a Cricut and make your signs with Cricuts? 
I actually have never even used a Cricut. I've never really seen the need to because I've always been able to make um, my signs like this. But I can see where a Cricut comes in handy if you're going to be doing um, t-shirts and, and that kind of thing, doing your iron-on vinyl. Let me know where you're watching from, guys. Love to see where you're from. I'm in Ontario, Canada. Got a beautiful day here. Spring has come. My tulips are coming up out of my garden. We actually didn't really have that bad of a winter. We didn't have a lot of snow. So it doesn't feel like it's been a horrible, horrible winter, but I'm definitely ready for spring. Okay, so I remember what this one says now. Follow your dreams. I have a Cameo 3, and yes, I made signs and custom vintage windows also from farm, uh, also farmhouse windows. I love doing windows. Usually when I find windows, the glass, the old farmhouse windows, the glass is broken out of them, which is fine because what I like to do is I like to cut pieces of wood in the panes, that, from the missing panes, and do little quotes in each pane, and it looks really nice. Um, I really love the way this technique mimics an authentic um, antique sign. I don't have the money to afford a Cricut, $280 plus tax, just for the machine. Yeah, I know. They're really expensive. And and then you got to buy your vinyl on top of it. And I'm a thrifter, repurposer. And I just kind of find I like this technique because it's affordable. And especially if you're making signs to resell, your cost um, is much more affordable for yourself and, than using a Cricut and doing it that way. Now, a lot of girls love their Cricuts, and I have my sister loves her Cricut, uses it all the time, but I just find anything that I want to make, I can do it with this technique, and I've never really wanted to get one. And I have some girlfriends that have Cricuts, that uh, actually I have one girlfriend that has a t-shirt business and sweatshirts and she does all of her graphics on her Cricut and does custom t-shirts and sweatshirts and that's really neat to do. But I don't need any more projects. This is as much of a project as I need. I would have to learn how to use one and all that kind of thing and I don't have time. Now this, this piece of wood was a little bit rough underneath um, when I sanded it and I'll show you as I'm rubbing it off and where those little rough bits are, that's where I say sometimes your letters will rub off. I like that look because like she was saying, um, like Christina was saying, it gives an antique look. It makes it look really antique and old. So I don't mind that. Sometimes I'll leave my board a little bit rough just to have that look. Okay. Louisiana. That Louisiana is on my bucket list. That is someplace I have always wanted to go the food. I've heard fantastic food. So as soon as all these restrictions get lifted and our border gets opened back up, I am looking forward to traveling down south and being able to do that again. And Mardi Gras. That would be cool to see. I got any Canadian friends on here? Let me know where you're from. And let me know if you like these lives where I'm doing something as I'm working away. I'm going to try to do at least one a week uh, just so you can kind of see in real time 
how all of these uh, projects are done because sometimes when I'm making a video and it's edited so much you don't see that it maybe took me two hours to make it and I put it all in an eight minute uh, an eight minute video which doesn't really give you the true time of how, of how much time it actually takes to make some of these things. We're getting there. I think this one would be really cute in a in a kid's room. Follow your dreams. Right now, my most popular signs that I'm being asked for are um, garden signs, porch deck signs, and Mother's Day, with Mother's Day coming up. I'm a natural at the lives. My husband just says I like to talk. I talk a lot. Maybe that's why I'm good at it. <laughs> and it's hard doing the YouTube live for you to see. Um, now I'm also on my TikTok live, but when I'm on my YouTube live, for you to be able to see my work, me working, you don't see my face either. I'm kind of out of the screen, but I'm here. Thanks, Diana. Well, I'm going to try to do at least one live a week if I can. It's hard to know when's the best time to do these two when people are available to watch. And it's hard to do them in the evenings because I don't have the proper lighting here in my, my craft room. So once it gets dark, if I was going to do a live around 7 or 8, it would be too dark in here. For I'd have to get some better lighting. But that's a possibility. You like the font of the Follow Your Dreams? Yeah, I do too. <clears throat> I love the handwritten fonts. I find when I'm making graphics, I always kind of follow through the uh, with the same ones over and over again. I kind of fall in love with a certain graphic and then I'll make 10 signs all with the same graphic. My favorite, favorite signs though are if I'm going through Pinterest and I see an old sign from an old business or like an old general store, I love taking those and recreating them. I've done quite a few of those and, and actually I have a piece, a great big piece of wood that I found, a round piece and I've been sitting and looking at it and I'm, I have an idea to do an old general store sign. I just have to design the graphics for it and that might be one of my next projects next week. Okay, I think we've pretty much got that pretty good. So you can see by me doing this, the time it takes to actually rub the, um, the paper off. And it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, and not too much water. That's the big thing, not to have your wood and your paper too wet. That will uh, lift your graphics off. And while we're going, I might as well put my top coat on. And then these will be finished. And I'm not sure if you can see, there is a little bit of cloudiness right here. I'm not going to rub it off anymore because I think that if I rub too much, I'm going to start rubbing the stencil off. Just going to leave it because when I put this top coat on, and again, when this gets um, uh, aired, I'll put a link below of all the stuff that I used so you can check it out. And once you put this top coat on, it's going to get rid of that cloudiness and when it dries it'll be gone. I'll just show you even just by doing it just now you can see that cloudiness is already almost gone. So just put a good coat. Now if you know that this sign is going to probably be outside I always try to do the top of it in case the rain is going to be falling on it and that will seal uh, the top and the bottom and you can also put a coat on the back too most of these signs are going to be inside so I'm not too worried about it so that's that one finished I'll do my welcome and this one as it dried there was a little bit of a cloudy bit right there I'm just going to rub off a bit more and sometimes when you let these just sit for a minute 
and really dry, you can see where those little cloudy bits are and just wet them and rub them off a little bit. That looks good. Ah. So happy I ran across your channel. Naomi, I think that's how you say your name. What a beautiful name. Glad to have you here. I love new crafting friends. I love to share my tips and tricks and techniques and hope I can help somebody out to, or inspire them to try to do these on your own. Some of these signs are so expensive if you go to a store to buy them. Um, when it is so easy to create these yourself. So let me know if you're making one today. Let, I'd love to see it. Send me a picture. What is your favorite way to hang these? Um, I just sometimes put D clips. Um, I don't have any in in my craft room right now, but I have the little um, C clip, or I think they're called D clips actually, that I'll put at the top. Or you can get the sawtooth clips um, that you can screw into the back too. If it's a little bit of a heavier sign, I like to use the screw in ones. And I'll put a link below in my description when this airs too for those hooks, and you can check those out. They're really affordable. Usually you can get uh, like a whole bag full of a hundred for, they're not very expensive, I think around $10. Welcome to my porch. Now this one's going to be outside, so I'm going to give it a really good, really good coat. And sometimes if I know they're going to go outside, then I will actually put two coats of this on. And like I said, this is the outdoor you don't have to buy the outdoor. It's just probably 50% of mine um, of my signs are for outside, so I always pick up the outdoor. But you don't need to. You can just get the indoor one. And you can also this is matte finish. You don't have to use a matte finish. You can pick up the glossy if that's your preferred look that you want. I just like the matte. I find because my signs are kind of that antique look, but the matte looks better on them. And another one that's going to go outside, and then I think I'm finished up. So I want to thank you guys for following around, following along on my live today. And if everybody's enjoying me doing these, when I have a project that I'm working away on, I will do more of these. And if there's a technique or something that you want to learn and you haven't seen them on my channel and it's something that I know how to do, send me a message or leave me a comment down in the description on one of my videos and uh, I'll make one and help you out. Okay, that's it. I've got all my signs done. So thanks guys for following along and um, I will keep in touch and like I said the next uh, tomorrow I'm going to have a, a video go on my channel for the complete start to finish steps of this in case you joined halfway through and you haven't seen what I did in the beginning and you can check that out so have a good day guys take care and we'll see you in my next video bye bye